In today's video, we're gonna be getting hands-on with the new Fuji X-T30, checking out the impressive specs and features to see if this camera lives up to all the hype. Let's roll that intro. Welcome to Ben's Guide, your guide to the best news, reviews, and how-tos from the world of photography and video. If you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button for new videos every single week. And all links in today's video will be left in the description area, so if you're interested in any products in the video, you can click the links there and go straight through to your favorite products. If you shoot Fuji or not, you're gonna have to go some to find anyone that's not impressed with the mix of classic and retro design and feature-rich camera systems. Fujifilm has now released a X-T30. This is like the bigger yet smaller brother of the X-T20 and at the same time almost a stepbrother of the X-T3. Sounds a bit confusing, right? The reason the X-T30 has been closely compared to the X-T3 is because it shares a lot of the same features, which is good news if you're a Fujifilm user. So let's get down to business, shall we, and take a closer look at the Fuji X-T30. Right off the bat, this thing is tiny. That's right, it's so small. If you've got big hands, it could very easily get lost in your grip. Fortunately for me here, you can see my hands are small, so the camera's not really lost in the hands. When a mirrorless camera is this small though, it does make me think, what things have they got rid of to make sure that they can get the body of the camera this small? We're gonna talk about that later on the video, so make sure you stick with me towards the end. Let's carry on round the outside of the camera. Of course, Fujifilm have kept that familiar look, which is this beautiful mix of classic and retro design. Now, nothing on the top has actually changed from the X-T20. you still got the exactly same dials in the same places. Coming around to the back of the camera, we now find ourselves with a little joystick. This has completely changed from the D-pad, which you found on the X-T20. With the joystick, you can control, obviously, the menu system functions and, of course, the focus points. Now, I will say, I hope you've got a small thumb because this joystick is tiny. Luckily, once again, my hands are very small, so I had no problem using the joystick function. The back display is a three inch touchscreen display. It is a 2.36 mega dot OLED viewfinder with 100 frames per second refresh rate in boost mode. This is actually the same screen which is found on the X-T3, which is great news that Fujifilm didn't decide to just go with the X-T20 screen and save some money. You do have the same screen which is found on the bigger model, the X-T3, which is really impressive. If we visit the front of the camera, this is where we're greeted with one of the most impressive specs on the camera, and this is the sensor. Fuji have loaded in a new X-Trans 4 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. This is also found in the new higher priced X-T3. This gives it a really good high dynamic range even when you're shooting up in the higher ISOs. Let's take a closer look at some of the numbers which I know some of you guys really like to look at. The X-T30 shoots at 4K at 30 frames per second. It does this at 200 megabytes per second and can output a clean 422 via HDMI. But when you're shooting internally, this is a 420 at 8-bit. One thing that I have noticed which lets this camera down, unfortunately though, is when you're shooting in 4K, you don't have the option to shoot very long, um, 10 minutes in fact. So if you're shooting 4K, 10 minutes is the limit. If you're shooting in 1080p, 15 minutes is the limit, which is really not that good. Now, unfortunately, this probably means that the 4K is overheating the camera. Jumping back into the video, the X-T30 shoots from 24 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second, which is great news. You can get that beautiful buttery slow motion. But I will say that there is a slight crop attached with this at the 120 frames per second. The good news is though, you can hardly notice any crop at all because it's so minor. 
The autofocus system on the X-T30 is solid. And when I say solid, I mean really impressive. You have frame to frame phase detection points, which means that you can get your autofocus points all the way across your image. Another thing about the autofocus system is that they really improved the eye autofocus and the face tracking system. This means you're just gonna get a lot smoother and a lot quicker autofocus when you're moving between the phase detection points. The X-T30's mechanical shutter speed is eight frames per second, which is really respectable for a camera of this size. If you're jumping up to electronic, then it's gonna be 20 frames per second. What I love about the X-T30 as well is they've got the same film simulation system for the JPEGs as you find on the X-T3. And a lot of photographers will tell you this is really, really nice. It gives you this beautiful colors that you can change between vibrant looks and different classic looks. And you can do this in camera with your JPEG system. So I'm really glad that they've got this on the X-T30 um, and they brought this over from the more expensive, bigger brother, the X-T3. Now I did mention earlier that the size of the X-T30 is very, very small. And it did make me wonder what they've had to sacrifice to keep the size down while providing you with some really respectable features. And I did find out when I was having a look around this camera exactly what that was. If you go into the port system of this camera, you have a 2.5 millimeter uh, mic jack, which you really want it to be 3.5 because you don't want to be using an adapter to change that over. You also have HDMI and you also have USB, which is great news. Unfortunately though, if you want to use these together or just at least two together, you're gonna to have some real problems. You're not gonna be able to fit them in because unfortunately, the way that Fujifilm have actually put the holes or put the connections on the camera stops you filling them in at the same time which is a, it's either a big oversight or it's just something that Fuji decided really wasn't that important. But for some people, this is going to be an issue, especially when they're using specific systems at the same time. When we look at the battery system on the X-T30, it's the same as the X-T3, which is also good news. You actually get up to about 380 shots out of the X-T30 and you get up to 45 minutes video. So that's more than respectable, especially when you're looking as such a small camera in your hand. Okay, so take a look at some of these shots taken by the X-T30. You can see that the camera produces some really nice shots, and of course you have the use of the film simulation modes, which I mentioned earlier. I can't help feeling this camera would make a really great little street photography camera due to its size, portability, and let's not forget its very good quality of photos and also of the color rendition. Now, unfortunately, the X-T30 is not weather sealed. So if you're planning on going out and shooting landscapes or doing some kind of quite rough outdoor photography, it's probably not the right camera to be using unless you've got some system, which of course protects your camera from the elements. Now I'm yet to find anything that's really that good to do this with. And I've tried quite a few. They all seem to be quite cumbersome and occasionally get right in front of your lens when you're taking a photo. Okay, so this camera is definitely a great step up from the earlier X-T20 with some solid extra features and a noticeably better performance. But it's best to view it as that instead of almost an X-T3, which though it shares some similar impressive features, realistically, it was never going to match up to the X-T3 performance as this costs around four to five hundred dollars more and that would be kind of cannibalizing the product if Fujifilm did that. Now all this being said in the video so far I would highly recommend the very small but yet lovely X-T30. It's a solid camera. Not only does it look lovely it also performs very well for its price range in both the realms of video and photography. Okay guys question of the day what do you think of the X-T30? Is it a camera you would consider or is it a camera that you would rather avoid? Leave your comments in the description below the video so we can talk about this after the video is finished.
Now next week here at Ben's Guide, we're getting our hands on the Sony A6400. I'm really excited about testing out this new camera from Sony. It's supposed to have an amazing autofocus system and it's also supposed to be uh, touted as some very good vlogging camera, but I have heard some things about the screen. So make sure you check out that video, which you'll find here next week at Ben's Guide. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. If you have, leave me a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. Whatever you do today, make sure you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.